In this overview, we will discuss a new security feature introduced in DHIS-230, two-factor authentication. We can see in DHIS-230, there is a new option to log in using two-factor authentication. As an example, we can enable two-factor authentication using an item the users know, in this case, their username and password, which has already been entered, as well as an item in which the users have. In this case, we can use their mobile phone. When you select Login using two-factor authentication from the login page, it will provide you with a prompt to enter a two-factor authentication code. In this example, I have set up my phone to be the second method of authentication and can enter the code created by my phone in order to log in. In order to demonstrate how this might be set up, using your phone to generate this code, I have logged in to a new user. Two-factor authentication is currently set up on a user-by-user -user basis. The individual user will have to set this up by going to their initials in the top right corner and selecting account. This will take them to the edit account settings page. If there is an issue after this has been set up, for example, let's say the user loses their mobile phone, an administrator can disable the two-factor authentication for this user. This will be demonstrated later on. In order for a user to enable two-factor authentication, the user needs to select the Set Up Two-Factor button on the Edit Account Settings page. Once in this page, the user will be asked to turn on two-factor authentication. We will demonstrate using the Google Authenticator app in order to generate codes on your phone based on the QR code that is created when two-factor authentication is turned on. After selecting a device type from the page, instructions on how to proceed with finalizing setting up the two-factor authentication will appear. In this case, as we are using an Android device, we must install the Google Authenticator app from the Google Play Store. Once you have installed the Google Authenticator app, you can use it in order to generate the second method of authentication on your phone. Choose the scan a barcode option and scan the code that is generated on your computer. The app will give a message that your account has been added. Notice the timer on the app. This method uses a time-based, one-time password method. New codes are constantly generated on your phone in order to ensure that one code is not reused as your second method of authentication. From now on, when I want to log in, I will have to enter my username and password, as well as the code that is generated via my mobile phone. We can get the code from the Google Authenticator app. If I only enter in my username and password without the code, and try to log in, it will provide me with a prompt indicating that I have provided invalid login information. This is because a user that enables two-factor authentication must always use the two-factor authentication code to log in. We can see that when the user enters their username and password, as well as the authentication code, they are able to log in successfully. If something happens to the user's mobile device, they will no longer be able to log in to DHIS2, as they won't be able to find out what code they need to enter. Administrators with the right permissions to manage users are able to disable two-factor authentication. We can see this here in the User Management app. Once I disable this, the user will be able to log in again with their username and password and not have to enter in any two-factor authentication code. If this user wants to log in again using two-factor authentication, they will have to set this up once again. This has been a brief overview of how we can use two-factor authentication in DHIS2 to add additional security measures to your login credentials. If there are any questions on the concepts related to two-factor authentication, please do not hesitate to let us know.